it because I have the honor to share the Sunday School Review here at the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church, 21, 2951 Evans Avenue. Did I say it right? All right. Our lesson today is a wonderful lesson. It deals with, uh, it is found in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 through 7, as well as uh, one of the marvelous verses of uh, 7, 8, and 9. Um, it is entitled, Testing Our Faith. <clears throat> The lesson is divided into two parts. The first part is dealing with passing the test. Have you ever had to pass a test? I mean, really had to pass it. You wasn't just taking it. I mean, you had to take it and you had to score us above a certain level passing the test. Did you know that every Sunday, no, every day we have to pass a test? There is a consistent question that is asked about us every day. Are you Christian? Are you Christian? Are you Christian? And that question is answered in varying degrees of yes. Oh, now I know that's a cold-blooded statement. Did you get that? It's answered every day, depending on the day, because some days we do certain things that we don't do on other days. You know, this is Sunday. We don't drink our juice on Sunday. Sunday is the day we don't go some places. Because it's Sunday. On Sunday, we dress a certain way because it's, come on here, because it's Sunday. Are you, sometimes problems occur in a day that cause us to question whether we are totally saved. If you're saved, you're totally saved. Did you get that? You, you can't be partly saved. You see, Christ didn't partly die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello out there? Are y'all with me? This is Sunday, right? And this is Sunday school time, right? And y'all do know you can talk back to the teacher. The more you talk back, the better I'll get. If you don't talk back, this is going to be a sorry period. You may have noticed some abhorrent behavior that you know is not in keeping with what the Lord desires in your life. And you try not to let nobody know that. You don't want no, nobody to know that, that there are times you don't act Christ-like. But we all know it because we are all what? Human. And some things get on our ever-living nerve. And we can't help it. When it gets on our ever-living nerve, we have an ever-living nerve response. And the question is, is there a way to dial that down so that you don't act none Christ-like. Oh, my. How do you measure up when the man cuts in front of you and you in a hurry? And it's, he's really anxious, but as soon as he cuts in front of you, he slows down. Hopefully, your vocabulary does not then spout out. 
non-Christ-like verbiage. But no, no, no. None of us in here understand non-Christ-like verbiage. What I said is every day we are tested as to whether or not we are living up to. Come on, y'all. You know I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Some of the brothers on this front row, they just looking up here and laughing at me. You talking about me, Rev? No, I'm not. I don't even know what you do. <laughs> the lesson presents itself really in two parts. The title for part one is Passing the Test. Passing the Test. It is significant that Paul begins this final chapter of this letter with a warning anticipating his third visit to Corinth. You know, Paul founded the church in Corinth, and he ever so often would just visit just to check them out. And he had already been there twice, and he's planning to go a third time, but he sends them notes to let them know that he's coming. In other words, he's warning them, you need to get some stuff together. What would Pastor Glenn have to say to us to get us ready to come on Sunday? If he spoke to us on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or on. Saturday, because most of us are ready to come to church on Sunday after our Saturday. Hello out there? Paul is saying, this is going to be my third visit, and I already gave you a warning when I was with you the second time. In fact, there were some folks I had to chastise, but I, I didn't. I didn't really beat them up. I let them get away with a little of stuff because I knew I was going to come back a third time. I, I remember when my children were, were whooping age. You know, when they get to a certain age, you can't whoop them because they just may, and then you got to kill them. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to have no child that's going to beat me up. And so, as a parent, I understood there was, when my son got to be 21, 22, there wasn't no whooping no more. Because that gets into fighting. Amen? And of course, I was the daddy. And if I'm the daddy, I can tell you some things to do if you stand at my house. Now, I'm not like some of you parents. The children stay at your house and don't respect you or the house. And to me, that don't make no sense. Because if they stand at your house, they ain't paying no rent. Now, if they're paying rent, that's a different situation. You go in your section where it's yours. <laughs> but you still can't act crazy in my area. Hello? And so, Paul begins this last chapter talking about what's to happen. It's obvious I need to come and visit you again. This lesson is personal because I can hear my mother, Roberta, Lord have mercy, when I get home, I'm going to get you. I, I'm going I mean, and, and, and if you don't poke you, put your mouth in, I'm going to get you now. I told you when you got to church, you were not to go up to the, to the, to the, to the service station and get a Coke. You, don't, you got Coke at home. That was the money you were supposed to put in the offering. Because I asked you, did you have any money? And you said no, and I gave you two quarters. One was to go in church, the other one was to uh, Sunday school, the other one was to go in the offering. 
And so you didn't have no business going up to the corner to get a coat because you didn't have no more money. That meant you stole from the church. And stealing requires punishment. And my mother had no problem punishing me. I, I, I know y'all didn't have no mother like Roberta. And, and one thing that she didn't like was me mumbling. When she's telling me what to do, and I would then be mumbling. I, I, my lips swole up a lot of times because she backhanded me in the front seat. Because I, I had to sit in the front seat with her. So she could do this. She loved to do that. <clears throat> Stop mumbling under your breath. I don't have the right to tell you. I have the right to tell you what you need to do. Uh, see, as long as I was at my mother's house, she had the right to tell me what time I could come in. That's why I was so glad when I moved out. Because then I could come in when I wanted to. But at Roberta's house, she said, I don't, I don't rest well until you get home. And therefore, and I'm not going to be still awake at no two in the morning. So whatever you're going to do, you need to have it done and be here by 12. No, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if y'all's mother talked like that to y'all. But my mother talked like that, and uh, she said, and don't be looking at me strange either. Like you're going to do something. Because you got to wake up in the morning. <laughs> my mother said, you too big for me to fight, so I'm going to shoot you. I know y'all didn't have no crazy parents like I did. You didn't stick your mouth out at Roberta's house when she was telling you stuff. You had to sit there and play like you were liking it. Hello? I have the right to tell you what to do, Paul says to the Corinthians. They didn't like the fact that he was telling them how to behave as Christians. They, 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 they didn't like the idea of the apostle telling them what to do. They just like some of us. We don't like the preacher telling us what to do. Oh, hello, pastor. <laughs> <You're doing all right. laughs> when I get home I'm going to get you that's what she'd say or she'd give you I'm going to get that I'm going to get you look I, I wish y'all had had a mother like I did because I knew how to talk to police I knew how to act in their presence. But see now, if I acted crazy at home, I may have acted crazy with the police, and I wouldn't be here now. I'd be in jail. Amen. Paul knew there was a problem going on at Corinth. They had questions, and he gives them answers in this neat little letter. He tells them, listen, there is a, there's a test that all Christians have to go through. Yeah, I know y'all didn't know you were in a test. You in a battle. Satan trying to get you and Christ trying to keep you. And some of us, I'll put, us, put me in this, some of us sometimes don't want to be under the instructions. This was the problem at Corinth. And Paul writes this letter. 
to help them understand that there's some stuff y'all got to stop doing. I know you didn't know that there's some stuff you have no business doing once you become Christian. Pastor, I'm sorry, this is not a good lesson. They don't even want to say amen. amen. It's going to be a tough day today. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to deal with the lesson. Paul had to address some issues at Corinth because they had become beside themselves. Have y'all ever become beside yourself? I'm grown. I can do what I want. No, you can't. You, you Christian grown. See, we forget to put the the preceding titles before. We are grown, but we're supposed to be what? Come on, talk to me. We're Christians, and as Christians, there's some stuff we ain't got no business doing. Yes, we all mess up, but it ought not be all the time. If you're going to mess up, that shouldn't be an everyday thing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, when I had children, I used to say they were brain damaged. I don't, I don't even know how I could produce brain damaged kids. I'm a very smart individual. And sometimes my own children acted like they were not my children. Because they acted brain damaged. Have you ever acted brain damaged? Sound like y'all had some parents like, like I was. Brain damaged kids act crazy. They do stuff they shouldn't do. And they do it always at the most inopportune time. When you're trying to impress somebody. The Corinthians were acting brain damaged. Like some of us do when we're not here on Sunday. You notice I didn't laugh that time, did I? That, that was not a time to laugh. That was a time to look introspectively. Is he talking about me? Did he? How does he know what I did on Tuesday? I don't, but I know what you did on Thursday. It was the same thing you did on Tuesday. That wasn't in line with your heavenly father. Paul was the spiritual father for the Corinthians. And it was his responsibility to give them tests. And these tests were to find out how they were conducting themselves. They even had the audacity to tell Paul that he didn't have Christ in himself. He, Christ wasn't a part of him. He, he, he was not following Christ's dictates because he told them what to do. Now, there were times I didn't like what Roberta said, but I never let her see it. Well, my lips would have been bigger. I had a crazy mother who felt that since she brought me in the world. Y'all had a parent like that? I brought you in and, and I'll take you out and the police ain't going to do nothing to me. But I'll kill you. And I believed her until I got to be about 22. And uh. Then when she pulled that, that pistol out and said, I'll kill you, I went on back in my room, got under the cover, and put the pillow over my head so that she wouldn't even hear what I was thinking. <laughs> Paul tells the Corinthians, examine yourself. 
to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. Don't you realize that Christ is in you or supposed to be in you? If you Christian, Christ is in you. How many of you got Christ in you? Everybody in here ought to be raising their hand. Because if you're here, you ought to be a Christian. Oh, y'all, come on. This is, this is one of these lessons that's kind of hard to teach because it shows us who we are and how we're supposed to be. And it's easy to say what we ought be, but it's more difficult to behave ourselves. Oh, y'all don't. Y'all helping me over here in the preacher. <laughs> we are special folks. And anybody who see us all know we special. And I'm not talking about special for the, for the white bus. I, I, I'm talking about special because of relationship with Christ. Many of us act like we are special because of our tendency toward the, the special bus. <laughs> but we ought also be known as special because we are Christians. There's some stuff you just can't talk about around Oliver because he's going to jack you up. There ought to be some things that folks just can't do in your presence because you don't stand for it. There ought to be some places if someone say they saw you to somebody else, that other person would say, no, I know that's a lie because he don't, no, no, he wasn't there. Uh, she wasn't there. There, there ought to be some places that people can say you went and, and the person to whom they are speaking will say, not so. As opposed to, oh yeah, I know. How did they act? <laughs> you ought not be known by the bad stuff. You ought, Christian folks ought be known by the good stuff they do. Hello? Don't, don't that get an Amen. That, that ought to have gotten a bigger, better hand, better amen than that. Okay, I got something else down here I'm going to get you with. Not only did the Corinthians say that Paul was strict, but the Corinthians came to understand that Paul didn't take certain things. Paul had no problem with chastising them. And Paul didn't like the fact that they were saying that Christ wasn't in him. You see, some Christians pride the fact that Christ can be seen in them. They are not like some of us. We don't want to be known as Christians. We want to be known as one of the regular po folks. We have gotten to the point that being called Christian is not good. Well, Roberta said you ought to be what you are. And if you're going to claim to be a Christian, you ought to act like one. And my mother would say, if you're going to live in my house, you're going to act like you live in my house. Christ expects us to act like what we are called.
moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me, never, ever come short of his word. I've got to fast and pray, stay in the narrow way. I'll keep my life clean every day. I want to go with him when he comes back. I've come too far and I'll never turn back. God Thank you for all that Thank you've you, done that you didn't have to do it for us, oh, Heavenly Father. You didn't have to go to Calvary for us, Lord, but we thank you, Lord. And all we have is said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Lord, I ask you to be up in this service. Let the Holy Spirit rule and reign in this place, oh, Heavenly God. Father. Bless everyone that's in here, Lord, and one that's online watching you, Lord. We just ask someone to come now and say, what must I do to be saved, you know? Just tell Jesus, you know. It's something about that name called oh, Jesus. Lord. Lord, I just thank you for Mount Olive, Mount Olive family, Lord. I thank you for all the urges that's on the door, Lord. The, uh, welcoming your people in with a smile, Lord. Pray for the musicians that they might sing, play a melody to you. Pray for the choir, oh, Heavenly Father, that they sing, oh, sign song to you. In this waiting congregation, oh, Heavenly Father, Fill them with your Holy Spirit, Lord. We need Please, you, Lord. Lord. Time is going back, but we know you are still in control. Now, Lord, before I close this prayer, I, ask, I lift up Reverend Stewart and his family to you. Yes, and Lord. his mother, oh, Heavenly Father. Touch her body. Restore her back to health, Lord. Touch oh, the Lord. family. Let them know that you have everything under control. Lord, yes, we Lord. love you because you first loved us, Lord, and you prove your love out on Calvary. We thank you, Lord, your son, thank Jesus' you, Lord. name. Amen. Amen. Continue in prayer. Father, we come in the name of Jesus to say thank you for, thank you, Jesus, for the privilege to worship and praise yes, you. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask that you give power and persuasion to your preached word. 
and anoint afresh the preacher for this hour. And speak to us, Lord, out of your holy word. Yes, Lord. Lord, speak to the lost, a converting word, and to all of us, a changing word. By the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, Lord. send us forward, witness into the world, your saving and sustaining grace. Lord, we give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalmist declares, I was glad. I was happy. I was excited. Amen. When they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Just look around. You're already here. So your prayer today ought to be, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Look at somebody and tell them, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Can you lift up your hand and give God a praise? Can you open up your mouth and bless his name? Yes, Lord. Moving in this place, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. Yeah, Lord. Way made, yes, Lord. Miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way made, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Say it, my God. That is who you are. You are here. Moving in this place. Moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. All I worship. I worship you. You are here. You are here. My, my, my. Moving in our midst. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. You are. We make miracle work. I must keep a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. We make miracle work. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. Yeah, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle work, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, Yellow. my God, that is who you are. You are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, Yellow. my God, that is who, who you are. are. I worship you. I worship you. Bless 
worship you. I worship you. You are here. Mend every heart. Mend every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Keep, promise, keep light in the dark. Yeah. Oh my God, that's who you are. Yes, Lord. Oh, your way may not be the miracle one. Promise, you keep, keep light in the dark. Oh my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are a way may not be the over trouble war. Amen. He's been peace in my storm. Amen. Joy in my sorrow. He's that and a whole lot more. That's why my testimony is this morning. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. And all that is with him. Bless his holy name. He's been too good. Done too much. Brought me too far. Paved the day, but I can lift up my hand, open 
And that was that we have the longest tenured pastor in the history of our church. And our church is over 100 years old. I also told you that there was going to be a big celebration and that you were going to be a part of it. And we wanted you to be a part of it. Well, you played a part. You did what we asked you to do in terms of taking pictures with the pastor. And a few days, you'll see your picture in publication, OK? Uh, but that's not all. The biggest, the part of the worship celebration is ready to start. And this Saturday at 5 o'clock, that's the kickoff. 
and we want you here to be a part of that celebration. What are we celebrating? We are saying thank you to the best first lady in the United States of America. My first lady, my sister, will you please stand? And Steve Wonder would say, isn't she lovely? So this Saturday, will you please take time and come and worship with us at 5 o'clock? That's a special worship celebration plan, and we would love for you to be a part of it. And say thank you to a very wonderful lady who prays with us, who laughs with us, who cleans with us and do whatever is necessary around here for the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you, Sister Glenn, for allowing God to use you. Well, like the song say, that's not where the story ends. That's not where the celebration ends. On Sunday, next Sunday, we say thank you to our pastor, the Reverend William Timothy Glenn. <laughs> for 33 years of dedicated service to the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. Wow, we have been blessed. And we still are being blessed by this man of God. Now, I told you everybody can be on program, but everybody can participate. There's an offering envelope for Sister Glenn that the Urshas have available on today. Hey, you say you love her? Show some love. You say you love him? Show some love. He told us once before that love is, is action, is a verb. That love is a verb, so let's put it into action. Mount Olive, let's say thanks to our First Lady and to our pastor for their leadership here at the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you so very much. Sales are calling. <laughs> Amen. If you're in need of an envelope for paying of the tithe, giving of the offering, raise your hand. One of our ushers will see you receiving one. Amen. If you're visiting with us today, will you please stand? You're visiting with us today, please stand. <laughs> Amen. We want to welcome you to Mount Olive today. We thank God for your presence in this place. There are many churches throughout this metroplex, and you chose to be here with us today, and we want to welcome you. God bless you. That goes for those who are in the virtual space as well. Amen. Also, our ushers have flyers for our Good Friday service that's sponsored by Bela. That will be on Good Friday. That's the 29th of March at 11 a.m. Bishop Jerry W. w. Macklin, who is the second presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ, will be our preacher. Amen. One of the Lord's best preachers. You will do yourself real good to be in church on Good Friday. Amen. Good Friday commemorates the day the greatest sacrifice the world has ever known was made for you. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and surely, on Good Friday, you ought to be willing to make a sacrifice to be in worship and celebrate that once and for all sacrifice Christ made at Calvary on our behalf. Look like some of these people didn't get this clock thing straight. <laughs> and I got a feeling they woke up late and discovered and then said, well, I'm not going to go in there late. 
Amen. And they just stayed home, and you're probably watching me now. Watching and worshiping are not the same thing. I've tried it a couple of times. Amen. And when it was over, I had to ask myself, did I worship? Or was I just watching? Our brothers are coming. Will old tithers please stand? Let's look to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that we have your gracious hands have provided. And for that we say thank you. We ask your blessings now upon both givers and gifts. For we pray and we ask it all in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. If you'll follow the direction of our ushers. this lovely group of ushers coming down on this side over here. Pray with and pray for our praise team. Not because I've been so faithful, not because I've been so good you always been there for me to provide my every need you were there when I was lonely you were there in all of my pain guiding my footsteps Shelter from the rain It was you Who made my life complete You are me My air 
everything that is what I can see. Jesus, I love because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you. I love because you care. I couldn't imagine if you weren't there. If you weren't there, you are the joy of my salvation. You're the peace in my storm. Your loving arms protect me. They shelter me from harm. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. My strong tower and my dearest friend. It was you who makes my life complete. You are to me my everything. That is why I can sing. Jesus, Jesus, I love because because you care. I couldn't, imagine I couldn't imagine what my life would be if you weren't there. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love all oh, because you care. Because you care. Lord, I just can't imagine, I couldn't imagine what my life would be like if you weren't there. Oh, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you care. Because you care. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. Oh, I want you to know, Jesus. Jesus, I love you, I love you. I confess it in my heart, Jesus. Jesus, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you because oh, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you, I love you. I love you, Jesus, I love you, I love you. Because you love me, Jesus. I love you, I love you. Oh, because you care. I love you, 
today like you love it. I wish someone would join me today. If you will, stand and face the camera and let's just say to Reverend Stewart, we love you. We're praying for you and your mother and your family today. Amen. 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 God bless you. I want to continue what I'm calling a mini-series on questions Jesus asked. Primarily questions he asked on his way to Calvary and then at the resurrection. Uh, John chapter 13. Beginning at verse 36. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Wilt thou lay down thy life for me? I think it's the New Living Translation that just says die for me. Amen. Another translation renders it, and that's what I want to talk about today. Will you die for me? God bless you. It is the eve of Calvary. Jesus. sits around a table in an upper room with his disciples. When he uttered the words of this text, he has cleared the room. Judas. Like a whole lot of church folk I know left before the benediction. All right, all right. Amen. 
What a relief it must have been. The traitor is now gone. And the Lord can now speak of his love and of his approaching death. He says to them, I'm about to leave you. But before I leave you, I want to leave you with this. A new commandment. I give to you. Love. One another. Just as I have loved you. And he takes it a step further. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The mark of a Christian. It's not a white dress or a black suit. The mark of a Christian is not a cross dangling from your neck. The mark of a Christian is not in a whole lot of hallelujah talk, knowing when to raise your hand, knowing when to buck your neck. No, Jesus says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love, one for love. It's a love not centered in one's own interests, but in the welfare of others. It's the love the Lord extends to us. He says, I want you to love one another just the same way I have loved you. His love was a costly love. It was a caring love. It's a commanded love. Amen. Judas, gone. He says, I'm about to leave you but before I leave you I want to leave you with this love one another amen just as I have loved you and by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another amen it's his final instructions to them before Calvary. And Peter missed all of that. And goes back to the Lord's statement about leaving. It's like he didn't hear a word the Lord said about loving one another, which is the primary point. He says, Lord, I want to revisit this thing about you leaving. Forget this love talk. I want to talk to you about this leaving. We can't be too hard on Reverend Brother Peter. He knew he was a disciple of Jesus. And the disciples' duty was to follow their teacher. And you're talking about leaving and saying, I can't go yet. But what I want to know is, why? You need to know, can't speak for these other fellows. But if it's going into death, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to do that. You know, when you read this thing, it reminds you of how little we know ourselves. Amen. Oh, big, bad, bold Peter. 
who relied on his strong resolve to keep his faithfulness to his master. Literally saying, I, I don't know what they're going to do. But I, I know. And, and if, if it means dying with you, well, I'm ready to do that too. And we've all done this. Boasted from time to time. In our own self-confidence. You do it all the time. Oh, I'd never do that. Boasting about what you will do and what you won't do. Here's what life has taught me. Thank God for what you haven't had to do. You're quick to judge what other people do. And say, child, I'd never do that. Says who? No, thank God. You've never had to be in their shoes. Because you just don't know what you'll do. Amen. Whatever you do, don't end up choking on your own self-confidence. The marvelous thing about the Lord is he hears what we say. But he's the God man. He already knows what we're going to do. Peter had a recurring problem in that he often talked before he thought. He put his mouth in motion before he ever put his mind in gear. Peter always felt he had to say something even when nothing needed to be said. Hey Amen. He got some kinfolk. They go to church at Mount Olive in Fort Worth on, on Evans. Amen. Look, Jesus says, I'm about to leave you, and you can't follow me now. Jesus says, You can't. Peter's rebuttal is, I will. Some folk, even church folk, who are close to Jesus, won't listen to everything the Lord said. This is not one of the other, of the 12 talking. This is Jesus saying, you can't follow me now. Peter's rebuttal is, I will. Peter protested. And when Peter protested, our Lord showed him that he knew all of the weaknesses lurking within him better than Peter knew it himself. Here's the sobering thought. The Lord knows me. Child, God knows my heart. That's church talk. You ever stop to really think about that? That how right you are, God really does know your heart. I don't know about you, but that's frightening to me. To know that God really does know my heart. We often live like God doesn't know. Amen. But God knows me. And when Peter boasted, I'm willing, to, even if it means death, to die for your sake. Everything within me believes Peter meant that. He meant that. That was Peter at his best. That was Peter at his highest. But not only do we have high in us, we got a whole lot of low in us. And Peter reminds us that we can all be swept away in a moment of weakness. Amen. That, that was Peter at his best. But it doesn't take long 
to go from your mountain to hell. You can be like you dwelling in heaven one moment. I haven't seen folks stop shouting and curse folk out. Do all this hallelujah and praise God in here and then start cussing out folk before you get back home. Peter was perfectly sincere. The problem was he didn't know himself nor did he understand his own weakness. Because within a few hours, Peter's boldness would be replaced with brokenness. Can't speak for these other guys. But as for me, I, I'm willing to die. Jesus literally says, I hear what you're saying, but I know what you're going to do. It won't take a whole lot to turn your world upside down. Fact about it, it won't even be an adult. A little girl shows up, looks through the flame, amen, and says, hey, hey, what's he doing here? That's one of his disciples. Peter says, I, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't even know this man. That little girl says, oh, yeah, you one of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your, your, your speech, man, the way you talk betrays you. Peter said, wait a Yeah, yeah, what do you say, what do you say? I don't know him. There are a whole lot of folk with some Peter tendencies. You can feel that in. And yet, when you look at Peter, foul mouth, fighting, switchblade packing Peter. There's something lovely in the relationship between Jesus and Peter. Even when Jesus asked, even when Jesus asked the question, will you die for me? And if the Lord was ever being sarcastic, it's right here. Peter says, I, I'm, I'm ready to die with you. And the Lord said, die for for me? <laughs> Peter clearly wasn't listening. The Lord didn't say, you can't go with me. He said, you can't go now. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what's in your future. You boasting about what you do tonight, but in the future, you're going down a cross just like me. Jesus knew Peter in all his weakness. He knew his impulsiveness. Peter didn't look and leap. He leaped and then he looked. He knew his instability. He can be all in one moment and all out the next moment. He, he knew he had a habit of speaking with his heart before he thought with his head. He knew well the strength of his loyalty but also the weakness 
of his resolution. Truth is, there's a whole lot of him in all of us. And I ain't talking about Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hate to be the one to tear a hole in your halo this morning. But, but, but I want to tell you, you're not all that. Amen. There's some weakness. There's some Peter tendencies in all of us. Jesus knew Peter as he was. And I know some of y'all missed some sleep. So you got to be coached when to say amen and when to shout. Here's, here's the shout. He knows you. And he still loves you. Amen. He, he loves you. He knows all about your weakness. And yet he's patient with you. Amen. He's kind with you. Amen. He loves you. And he has more patience. And he can, he can help you through your weakness. And look over your weakness. Better than the person you slept with last night. He knew Peter in all of his weakness. Amen. And my shout today is that he knows me in all of my weakness and yet he loves me. Yet he still chooses to use me. There's a second word here. Jesus knew Peter in all of his love. He knew that no matter what Peter did or said, Peter loved him. When he don't sound like it, I know he loves me. When he doesn't act like it, I know his heart. I know he loves me. And this is the basic thing today. The basic thing is not Peter's failure, it's Peter's love. You remember when Peter got restored after the resurrection? The Lord didn't even talk about denial. Do you love me? I wish my daddy could have picked up on that. Amen. Here's what I'm trying to say to us today. That oftentimes people hurt us, fail us, wound us, and disappoint us, and yet love us. All at the same time. Our problem is that whenever people hurt us, fail us, wound us, disappoint us, let us down, the very first thing we question is their love. The question is, do you have enough of the love of Christ in you to forgive that moment of weakness. The Lord forgives you. In your moments of weakness. And brothers and sisters. We all have. Those moments of weakness. Amen. 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 Life has taught me this. You never judge a person in their weak moment. Because if you do, well, there goes Abraham. He's called the father of all those who have faith. There goes Jacob. 
And yet the Lord made, blessed him with sons that became the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, there goes Moses. That goes David. A man after God's own heart. There goes Paul. Well, I shouldn't be standing here. You shouldn't be married. You shouldn't still have a job. Amen. You never judge a person in their weak moments because we all have weak moments. And there's, a, there's another word here. Jesus knew not only what Peter was, but also what he could become. You don't know when to say hallelujah. You don't know when to throw up both hands and just holler like you just don't care. Amen. He knew that Peter, that at the moment, Peter couldn't follow him. But he knew the day would come when Peter would follow him. Not just to death, but in the same kind of painful death. In fact, about it, historians say when they got ready to crucify Peter, he only asked one thing. Do it. I want to be upside down because I'm not worthy to die like my Lord. Peter didn't understand then. That Christ must first die for Peter before Peter can die for him. Yeah. It's the greatness in Jesus that allows him to see the hero in a coward. In a few hours. He gonna deny he even knows me. He's gonna curse folk out about that. Just a little while. He 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 gonna pull out a knife, cut off a fella's ear. Amen. But I can also see. This fellow who's going to preach on Pentecost. And 3,000 souls. Are... I can also see this fellow. Who up the road. Is going to lead the church. Amen. Aren't you glad. That the Lord. Can see you for not just who you are. But for who you can become. He has the power to see us for who we can be. And he has the power to enable us to attain who he wants us to be. Problem is that Peter was trusting in his own loyalty. Rather than trusting in the Lord. And that set him up for failure. I want to tell you today, make sure you've got your trust in the right one. Amen. It, that, that seems simple, but you got to be sure you've got your trust in the right one. Amen. Amen. We, we live in this time when things are changing at a rapid speed as it relates to technology. And it's so easy to put your trust in other things. Amen. Henry Kissinger was asked shortly before he died. What is 
America's greatest threat. And he said it's, it's not just America's greatest threat. But the greatest threat in the world now is not foreign powers. It's not nuclear weapons. The greatest threat in the world right now, he says, is AI. You get in trouble when you allow artificial intelligence to do all you're thinking, to solve every problem. Where does God come in? A friend of mine was sharing with me, they've got an AI sermon app now. You, you just put in there what you want to preach about. It all comes out. He said, man, that's something, man. I said, yeah, it is, but where's the Holy Ghost? Where is God in all of this? Amen. Peter's trust was in his self and not in the Lord, and he failed in a time of crisis. I want to tell you my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean, on Jesus' name. Anybody will join me on Christ? The solid rock I stand. Fact about it all of the ground is but sinking sand. Peter's trust was in what he thought Peter could do. Have I got a witness? And he ended up failing badly. Yes, Lord. Uh, but what I love about the Lord is that Jesus loved him all the way to the end. Have I got a witness? I thank God we serve a Christ who does not throw us away when we fail and falter. Have I got a witness? Yes, Lord, because the love of Christ is a love that sacrifices self for the good of others. Have I got a witness? Yes, Lord, that's what Jesus' love was all about. It was about sacrificing self for the good of others. Help me help your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, that sounds like Calvary. Because a few hours later, Jesus went to Calvary. And out on Calvary, they drove nails in his hand. Out on Calvary, they drove spikes in his feet. Out on Calvary, they lifted him high, dropped him low, stretched him wide. Out on Calvary, they pierced him in the side. But I hear him saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I hear him saying to a dying thief, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise. And I don't care he died. Didn't he die? Anybody here know he died? He died to save a sin-cursed world. He died that I might be free. He died that I might be taken in. He died that I might be redeemed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Have I got a witness? Peter thought he was bold, but the problem is he wasn't bold enough. Have I got a witness? Oh, big bad, cussing, fussing, fighting, 
switch bay, pack and beat him. Thought he was bold, but he wasn't bold enough. And I'll tell you why, he wasn't bold enough. Because it hadn't been broken yet. Have I got a witness? But I thank God, before the rooster crowed, he was broken. He was broken. He was broken. And God was able to use it after he was broken. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, we can shout because we serve a God who uses the broken. Have I got a witness? He used a broken Jacob. He used a broken Joseph. He used a broken Moses. He used a broken David. He used a broken Peter. He used a broken Paul. Have I got a witness? It was after he was broken. After he was broken, Peter got programmed for Pentecost. Somebody must have asked one of those 120 who was on their way to the upper room. Where you going? I'm getting ready for Pentecost. We're going to go up in the room and we're going to pray until the Holy Ghost comes down. And when the Holy Ghost comes down, Peter going to stand up and preach one sermon and 3,000 are going to join the church. You talking about Peter? Lying Peter, that's him. Denying Peter, that's him. Cussing Peter, that's him. Fighting Peter, that's him. Have I got a witness? You don't understand. You know him before he got broken. But once he got broken, he got in a posture where God can use him. That ought to be your prayer. Break me, Lord. Make me, Lord. Mold me, Lord. Anybody here can shout today. If the Lord had room for Peter, surely he has room for you. Have I got a witness? Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, it does not matter about your past. It doesn't matter who's tried to rake, write you off. We serve a God. He's able to write you back in when the world writes you off. Can you shout today? God has room for you. God has space for you. God has a place for you. Now look at him and tell him, come if you're lost, if you're lonely, if you've been left out, you can come. If you're lonely, you can come. Broken, bruised, you can come. Sinful, sad, sick, you can come. For the word is, whosoever will, let him come. And I thank God. A long time ago, I got the word, and can I tell you what I did? I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, worn, and sad, but I found in him a resting place, and he had made me glad. You know what he did? Pick me up around started me on my way anybody here know him anybody here know him ain't he all right ain't he all right can you see him yes yes
talks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. And all the joy, all the joy that flooded my soul. Anybody here know my Jesus? Anybody here know my Lord? Can you lift up your hand? Open up your mouth and tell him thank you. Thank you. Broken, but he loved me. Bruised, but he loved me. Sad, but he loved me. Jacked up, but he loved me. Yes, yes, his love. Won't let me go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you praise him? Can you praise him? Ain't he worthy? Ain't he worthy? Ain't he worthy? Yeah.
the Lord says to Peter, will you die for me? Are you willing to follow me that far? Jesus says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up the cross and follow me. When the Lord says, follow me, he's literally talking, are you willing to follow me into love? Amen. And today we come to the time of invitation. And if you're here, if you're without Christ, this invitation is for you. You need a church home. This invitation is for you. Simply need to make a change in your life. This invitation is for you. Or maybe you're faced with some situation. That in spite of all you're trying, you haven't been able to fix it. Anybody been there other than me? You've been in some situations that only the Lord could fix. Anybody know he will, he'll fix it? And maybe that's your need today. Whatever the great need is in your life, Jesus is the answer. We, we invite you to come. Without Christ, you're without church. Need to make a change. Faced with an impossible situation. This invitation is for you. Come. There's not a friend. Like yeah, Lord. The Lord. Bless you. No. Not one. Not one. Oh Lord. No. Not one. Not one. None else can heal. Oh. For Jesus knows all about our struggles, and He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the Lord. No, not one, no, not one, for Jesus knows all about, 
all about our struggles yes, and he will get yeah. to the day Like the lonely Jesus, you can't find one, no, not one, no, no. Not, not one, not one, not one, you can't find one, not one. God bless you today. You're here and you're struggling with the decision of whether or not to get up and move. Pastor Glenn Grant said to me a couple of years ago, he said, I want you to be my pastor. A few days ago, he says, I'm going to make a special trip. He left his church to be with, here today so he could officially join my honor and I'd be his pastor. He came 270 plus miles and yet you sit in that seat and know you need to move and you won't walk a few feet. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Believers are praying. If you know in your heart you're without the Lord Jesus, I'm going to ask you to get up right now. Just asking you to stand. God knows. I know you may be thinking, well, I don't have to get up because God knows. He says, if you'll be ashamed to own me before men, on earth, I'll be ashamed to own you before my Father which is in heaven. Wherein does life lie, in him or in them? If you're here, you know in your heart you're not saved, just stand. That's all I'm asking you to do now, is just stand. You know you're out of fellowship with a church. You don't have a church home. You haven't been actively involved in a church. All I'm going to ask you to do right now is stand. Stand. God bless you. Thank you for your honesty. You're here. You're faced with a situation. You've tried to fix it, but you haven't been able to fix it. Some things going on that only the Lord can fix. If that's where you are, I'm going to ask you to stand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Lord, we thank you for these who have come. We thank you for these who've stood wrestling with the decision of whether or not to come. Speak to their hearts right now. Others are acknowledging that I'm dealing with some stuff that only you can fix, Lord. We know you're able. We know you can. Our prayer right now is that you will. Fix it. Jesus, fix it. Right now we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch, heal, and deliver right now. Set free right now. Oh God, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need a church home, you're already standing. Make one step out the aisle. Make, just make one step out. Just make one step out in the aisle. Just make one step out.
in the aisle. You've come too far. You've stood. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. You don't have to join my knowledge. Just make things right with the Lord today. Amen. Just Amen. just get up, baby. Get up. Get up. Get up. Come out now. One of these brothers is coming to meet you. Come on. Come on. Come on. God bless you. Come on. Come on. Come on, brothers. Somebody meet them. Somebody meet them and greet them. Somebody meet them and greet them. y'all would be more excited than that what if it was you what if it was your child oh bless his name all right i'm going to ask all of you to stand you can complete the information in the rear if you'll go with our membership team reverend williams glenn you can come this way just go with them. God bless you. Thank you, brothers. Reverend Grant, come and say good morning to us. Amen. Thank you, amen. Come on, the church say amen. amen. Did not our pastor preach this morning? <laughs> I've been waiting to say that a long time. Our pastor. Amen. I bring you greetings from the Mount Air Missionary Baptist Church in the Fifth Ward section of Houston, Texas, where I've served as senior pastor for the past 32 years. And so God has been good to us. And um, I grew up in the St. Mark Church. Amen. Uh, pastor Lot was there then, and he's my first cousin. And then Pastor Glenn came. And uh, so we have known each other for many, many years. And I consider him my big brother as well as my pastor. And so and I'm so honored to be a part of this church and to have him to be my pastor. And, uh, and so we're grateful. Thank you, man. I love you. And uh, let me have my family is here, part of my family. My wife is here. My, my songbird like, like Stephanie. Amen. Stand, baby. Amen. The Lord has gifted her with a voice. And then my son and his girlfriend is here. Won't y'all stand? Amen. Amen. My namesake. <laughs> Amen. So we thank you and uh, for such warm hospitality. There's always a great spirit in this church. And, uh, and I love Pastor Glenn. And, uh, and I'm grateful to be a part of the Mount Olive Church. Thank you for accepting me. God be praised today. Look at somebody and tell them it's, it's been a good day. Amen. Let's prepare our heads and hearts to go down from this place today. Gracious God, our Father, we praise and we bless your name. Thank you for this privilege of worship. Thank you for all that you're doing in us, through us, and among us. And as we make ready to go down from this place, we don't know what dangers lie beyond these doors. So our prayer is that you will go with us, stand by us, Watch over us. Keep us, Lord. For if you keep us, then we know we shall be kept. We pray and we ask it all in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Children and their children 
and their children. May His favor be upon yeah, you Lord. and a thousand generations, and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor yes, be upon. Church say amen. Make it 